Welcome back, everybody. As we finish talking about conformity, let's wrap up our discussion by talking about social impact theory. We've discussed several different forms of social pressure, and that's what this continuum of social influence shows us. We've discussed conformity, where the social pressure is relatively light, and we've stepped that all the way up through compliance and into obedience, where the social pressure is really pretty heavy. And of course, when the social pressure is relatively intense, it takes quite a bit to resist it. Given all of the different forms of social influence that we've discussed, it'd be interesting to see if one single theory could predict all of the effects of social pressure. And that's exactly what social impact theory tries to do. Social impact theory states that the impact of a source of influence on a target person is a function of three primary factors. The source's strength, the immediacy of the target, which essentially talks about the psychological distance that the source is from the target, and the number of sources that exist. So let's go ahead and delve into social impact theory a little bit more deeply. Keep in mind that in our world, we're always trying to influence one another, and we often have many different sources of influence acting upon us. And I mentioned that social impact theory states that the impact of that source is primarily a function of the strength of the source, the immediacy of the source, and the number of sources overall. And although we'll go into much more detail, it should make basic intuitive sense that a source of social influence, whether it's a friend or a boss or a family member or a politician, is going to have more influence the stronger it is, the closer it is to you psychologically, and based on their numbers overall. So for example, a group of close friends who maybe all live in your apartment building, they're going to exert more social influence in your life than some estranged uncle who lives out of state. That's what I mean by these different factors here. Let's delve into them in a little bit more detail. One thing that's going to help is by using an analogy. And we're going to use an analogy that involves lighting. So think about each one of these lights as a source of influence and they're trying to illuminate this countertop. So one factor that's pretty obvious engaging the influence of that source is the strength of the source, in this case, the strength of the light. And of course, stronger lights are gonna have more of an impact on illuminating that surface than weaker lights. Another factor that influences the illumination of the countertop is the immediacy of any one of those light sources. And I know that can be a little bit confusing, but I think this will clear it up pretty well. So imagine if all of these lights were equal in their intensity. Because these lights are closer to the surface than these lights right here, these lights will have more influence. In other words, all things being equal, these lights that are closer are going to illuminate that surface more so than these lights that are further away. And then finally, of course, the number of lights overall is going to have a major impact on the amount of illumination regarding the lighting on this surface. So the only reason I'm talking about lighting is I'm trying to make it so you'll be able to understand the examples that we're going to go through next that involve actual social behavior. All right, well, check out this example involving a comic version of an intervention. The comic says, I invited a few friends over who think you should see a psychiatrist. So here we have our target person. And here we have all of these different sources of social influence. They are trying to influence this target person right here. Now, according to social impact theory, there are three key factors that will help us identify how much pressure will be exerted on that target person. Let's talk about each one. So the first factor has to do with the strength of the source. Let's assume that these are competent, well-respected, long-term friends that this man has. And keep in mind as well, this is his wife. So because of their social roles as close friends and as a wife, they should have a lot of social influence on this man. All right, a second key factor was the immediacy of these sources. And keep this in mind, these friends right here, they are in his face right now. And not only that, because they're close friends and because this is his wife, they are in his face often. They are in his house often. So their psychological distance to him is actually very close, and that should maximize the effects of their social pressure. And then, of course, another key factor is the number of sources of social influence that are working in this situation. And look, we can see there are a lot of people. These are all of his friends. 
So the more sources of social influence, the more this man is going to be influenced. If you evaluate this situation in terms of social impact theory and its key factors, we would predict that this intervention would be pretty persuasive. Sorry, buddy. Well, just as many strong, close sources will maximize the social pressure exerted on a target, it's also true that many strong, distant targets will diffuse or weaken the social pressure from any given source. For example, imagine a dad who lives in Ohio. He may lose quite a bit of his social influencing power when his strong-willed kids move out of state. Unlike when his children all lived at home and depended on him, he now has much less social impact on their daily lives. So, to summarize, people are most likely to resist social pressure when pressure from that source is divided among many strong targets who are buffered by some type of psychological distance. Let's look at a work-related example. Here's the boss. Let's assume that he decided to work from home today and then he calls into his office to give his staff their daily orders. And of course, they're all gonna gather around the phone and listen intently. Let's see how this social situation would play out based on social impact theory, looking at those three key factors. The first factor involves the strength of the targets. And let's just assume that we have there a very cohesive group of very strong-willed people. The second key factor involves the immediacy of those targets. And let's just assume that those employees are miles away from the boss and they realize there's no way the boss is going to show up for work today. And then that third key factor would be the number of targets that the boss's social pressure needs to be distributed among. Well, in this example, there's a decent number of people in that group, enough so that not one individual employee is particularly worried about the repercussions when the boss returns to work tomorrow. So according to social impact theory, this boss who's trying to manage these employees from a distance is unlikely to have much social influence today. You gotta love it when the boss calls off because when he does, his social influence is drained considerably. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.